In the heart of the Eastern Cape province, along the rugged coastline of South Africa, lies the renowned surfing spot of Nahoon Reef. It was here, on a seemingly ordinary Sunday in July of 2000, that Shannon Ainsley, a 15-year-old South African boy, had been riding the waves with his brother Brandon and several friends when not one but two great white sharks simultaneously attacked him. This is the true story of Shannon Ainsley's unprecedented double great white shark attack. On July 16th of that fateful year, Ainsley, an avid surfer, found himself at Nahoon Reef. Nahoon Reef is definitely famous for its sharks and shark attacks. I was so scared of Nahoon Reef, and everyone would always say their prayers before they surf, and say, hey God, please keep us safe today. The reef is a popular surfing spot in East London, South Africa, known for its consistent waves and beautiful scenery. It's a place where locals and tourists alike come to enjoy the thrill of riding the Indian Ocean swells. Surfers dotted the horizon, their silhouettes against the morning sun creating a picturesque scene. He was there with his brother and eight more of his friends, including himself, all of which were eager to take advantage of the excellent surfing conditions. The day was during the annual sardine run, a natural phenomenon that sees billions of sardines spawn into the cool waters of the Agulhas Bank and move northward along the east coast of South Africa. And unsurprisingly, this particular event attracts a wide array of predators, including dolphins, seabirds, and of course, sharks. Despite the potential danger, Ainsley and his companions were undeterred. They were there to surf, to feel that familiar rush of adrenaline as they rode the waves, and to experience the freedom and the exhilaration that only surfing can provide. As Ainsley rode the waves, he was in his element, the cool water beneath his board, the taste of salt on his lips, and the rhythmic sounds of the waves crashing against the shore, a sensory symphony that only a surfer truly understands. His eyes would then be drawn to the beauty of the ocean, its vastness stretching out to the horizon. I think I had been surfing for about an hour or hour and a half, he was completely immersed in the moment, his mind and body in perfect sync with the rhythms of the sea. Suddenly, without any warning, two great white sharks, each estimated to be approximately 13 feet long, emerged from the depths. One of them aimed directly for Ainsley's head and the other for his torso, their powerful bodies propelling him through the water with tremendous force. Two sharks came for me, and the shark on the right was going for my head and my shoulders, but it missed me, fortunately, because the shark on the left got me first. And in a split second, what once was a tranquil scene was shattered as Ainsley was tossed in the air, the force of the attack sending shockwaves through the water. It's important to note that unbeknownst to Ainsley and his friends, a Canadian backpacker named Sean Smith had been videotaping the surfers from the shore. His camera captured the chilling moment as one shark bit into Ainsley's board, dragging it under the water. And the footage also clearly shows the second shark silhouetted in a breaking wave to the right of the surfboard, its fin visible above the water's surface. And just as Ainsley was thrown from his board by the first shark, the second shark moved away. Due to the restrictive nature of this platform, I'm unable to share the footage here. However, for those interested in viewing it, I'll be uploading the video to my Rumble account and Patreon page within 24 hours of this post. The suddenness of the attack left Ainsley in a state of shock. One moment, he was riding a wave, and in the next, a life or death struggle with not one, but two of the ocean's most fearsome predators. I remember just staring at the shark face to face with his mouth wide open. And I could see his one eye staring right into my face. And I could see all of his teeth. The fears and the thoughts and the emotions I was going through were just indescribable. I was 15 years old. I wanted to surf and yeah, these sharks just attacked me and I'm about to die. White sharks, while known to occasionally exhibit group behavior, are not typically known to launch coordinated attacks on humans like this. They're widely considered solitary animals for the most part roaming the oceans alone and covering vast distances in search of food. However, they have at times also been observed gathering in groups in certain situations, such as feeding on a large carcass during mating season or at specific locations known as shark cafes where food is abundant. And it's important to note that these gatherings are much more about convenience and opportunity rather than a coordinated group effort, as great whites of course are not known to be social animals. And then the shark swam past me to my right and around me and then bumped me from behind and just shoved me forward. So I swam to my board, and as I did that, I saw my fingers hanging off my hand, and blood just squirting and rushing out of my hand and fingers. At this point, the sharks, whose bodies were streamlined for efficient hunting, began circling a horrified Ainsley, their eyes devoid of any emotion, and their intent clear. No one stayed in the water to help me out. Everyone just bailed and left me in the water, all to myself, 
and I was looking to my right and to my left all the time, waiting for these sharks to come back for me any second. I prayed and said, hey, Jesus, please, like, I need some help here. Please help me out. And all of a sudden, this wave came out of nowhere, and all my fear just disappeared. Gathering as much courage and energy as he could, a shocked Ainsley would then manage to paddle back to shore. It was only once he was ashore that he realized the extent of his injuries. Seeing blood dripping from his hand like a water faucet, the reality of the situation began to sink in. His companions would then quickly apply a tourniquet to his arm using his leg rope and rushed Ainsley to the hospital where he underwent emergency surgery. Ainsley's right wrist was broken and he sustained multiple lacerations to his hand. The most severe damage was to his middle finger, lacerations extended to the bone, and his surfboard was also damaged by the sharks. Despite the traumatic experience, Ainsley did not let the incident deter his passion for surfing. Instead, it deepened his love for the sport and the ocean. He would go on to become a surf coach in Norway, inspiring others with his story of survival and resilience. And just recently, in 2022, Ainsley released his biography, Child of the Wild Coast, the story of Shannon Ainsley, dual great white shark attack survivor, a book in which he would detail his life-changing encounter with the sharks in his own words. Until this day, Ainsley continues to embrace the ocean not with fear, but with a deeper understanding, respect, and appreciation of its inhabitants. If this episode piqued your interest, then our previous episode, about a swimmer that was bitten five times by a mako shark in the Red Sea, is likely to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video.